Yes, we finally get to learn a shortcut to, um, instead of using that windy differentiation technique I showed you. So, shortcuts are good. But before we do that, let's start off with two uh, basic concepts. So, d over dx. Remember that that's another way of, uh, that's one way of saying take the derivative. Right, so, if we take the derivative of a constant with respect to x, okay, so that's where that comes from, right, that's where that part comes in. So if we take the derivative of a constant with respect to x, what do you get? Okay, so taking derivative is the same thing as finding its slope. So what do I mean by constant? Well, say we have the function y equals 3, okay? This is just simply a horizontal line. So then the slope of a horizontal line is 0, so therefore taking the derivative of a constant is equal to 0. Okay, so dy over dx is equal to 0. Right, so that's pretty straightforward. What about taking the derivatives of linear lines? Well, a linear line has the same slope throughout its entire graph. So taking a derivative means finding its slope, so we would expect the derivative of a linear line to be its slope. And indeed it is. So if I wanted to take the derivative of 2x plus 1 with respect to x, what do I get? I get 2. Right? And if we want to use the functional notation, f of x is equal to 3x minus 4, f prime of x, f prime of x, f prime, uh, means the derivative of f of x. That would be 3. Okay. So, that was the easy part. Now for the fun part. Now we finally get to learn the shortcut, and it's called the power rule. Okay, so say if the function f of x is equal to x to the nth, when f prime of x is, it's nothing too tricky, but it's going to be n times x raised to the n minus 1 power. So what you do is you take uh, whatever you have in the power, you take it down, put it as a coefficient, and then you subtract 1 from the power. Okay. So, or... Okay, so instead of using this notation, I'm just going to give you the other notation. So, say y is equal to x to the nth, dy over dx is equal to n times x to the n minus 1. Same thing, just different notations, right? y instead of f of x, and dy over dx instead of f prime of x. Same thing, different notation. So let me give you a simple example. So say y is equal to um, x to the second, or x to the 21st. So then, what would be dy over dx? So what you do is you take the power, bring it down, uh, and then you multiply x raised to the, to subtract 1 from the power, so 20th. So it's 21 times x to the 20th. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then here's another example. y is equal to 5 times x to the fourth. Okay, now notice that there's a coefficient here to begin with. Well, we just simply um, pull that aside and take the derivative of this. So, um, dy over dx is simply going to be, so we leave the 5 alone, and then we take the derivative of this. So it's going to be 4, we're bringing the 4 down, times x raised to the third, which is equal to 20 times x cubed. Okay, so if we have y equals k to the nth, where k is a constant, then dy over dx is simply k times n times oh, x raised to the nth minus 1. Right, so just keep the constant. Okay, that was that. Now, say we have... Um, f of x is just equal to x. Okay, so f of x is equal to x. What is that? That's just a horizontal line, right? Sorry, it's a diagonal line in a graph. Like that. 
Okay, so what's... What's the derivative of that? Well, we know that x is actually x raised to the first power, or x raised to the 1. So then we know 1 down, and then we multiply that by x. Okay, so 1 minus 1 is 0, and x to 0 is 1. So, there you go. The derivative is 1, and indeed it is because the slope is 1. Mm -hmm. Alright, so then, here's another example. f of x is equal to 1 over x squared. So then, what is its derivative? Well, um, before you get the hang, well, until you get the hang of this, it's always helpful to rewrite this as x raised to the negative 2, right? Because it's the denominator, and so you just put in a negative sign if you want to bring it up. So x raised to the negative 2. So if you want to take a derivative of that, you bring down the power to the negative 2 times x. Okay, so negative 2 minus 1 equals negative 3. So it's going to be negative 2 times x to the negative 3, which we can rewrite as negative 2 over x to the third. So that's our answer. That's the derivative. Well, uh, what about f of x is equal to the fifth root of x? Right, so we can rewrite this as x raised to the one fifth, right, as a fraction now. The power is a fraction now. So now make sure you don't mess up here. So the derivative is we're going to take down the power, 1 over 5, times x raised to the 1 fifth minus 1 equals negative 4 fifth. Okay, and if you write this, it's going to be 1 over 5 times x to the 4 fifths. Right, if we bring x down, we take away the negative sign. So that's the derivative. 1 over 5 times x to the 4 fifth. Mm -hmm. And then, um, okay, here's this another, another example, but in this case, um, there's a constant living upstairs in a fraction. Same thing still, um, so we just rewrite this, so there's 3 over 4, uh, sorry, 3 over x to the 4th equals 3 times x to the negative 4th, so the derivative is 3, right, we just take Ignore this part. So 3 times negative 4 times x raised to the negative 4 minus 1, negative 5. So then 3 times 4 is negative 12 over x to the 5. Okay, so isn't that so much quicker? Like we did like five problems. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 problems in a short amount of time as opposed to actually using the the differentiation formula. Right, um, one last thing. Some indifference rules. Okay, so the rule is that if you're taking the derivative of two equations, of two polynomials added together, well, not polynomials, of two functions added together, it's just simply equal to the sum of its um, individual derivatives. And so the same goes with minus. So if you're taking d of x, if you're taking derivative of plus or minus f of x plus or minus g of x, that's just simply equal to f prime of x plus or minus g prime of x. So let me give you an example. Right. Um, so say y is equal to 5x to the third minus 4x minus 1 plus 5 over 4, sorry, 5 over x to the fourth. Well, okay, let's do this. So 3 times, sorry, so the first part, 5 times uh, 3 is 15 times x, 3 minus 1 is 2. Okay, see what I'm doing? Minus, okay, so x to the first, so x to the one, so 4 times 1 is 
4, okay, but x, but 1 minus 1 is 0, so this is actually 1, x is 0 is 1, okay, now I'll take a look here, negative 1, this is a constant, right, so its derivative is just simply 0, if you want, or another way of thinking, it, another way of thinking about it is, um, yeah, so, uh, negative 1, actually, you, we can add in a x to the 0 power in there, right? Because x to the 0 power is, um, let me write that here. So, okay, x to the 0 power is simply 1. So we can plug, write that in. And then if we were to take the, if we were to take the derivative of that, that's going to be negative 1 times 0 times x to the negative 1. But we have a zero here, so equals zero. So that's how we can think about it if you don't like the first way I presented. Alright, so um, anyway, it's zero plus, well then we can write this, make my life easier. So five times x to the negative fourth, so that's going to be negative 20, this times this, okay, times x raised to the negative five. Okay, so rewriting it is going to be 15x squared minus. 4 minus 20 over x to the fifth. Isn't that so much easier? It is. Okay, one last thing. Okay, sorry. There's one more thing. I promise. Um, notice. Okay. There's some um, notation of things. So say we have this y is equal to x squared plus 1. Then, um, we can write the derivative as x, sorry, we can write the derivative as y prime or dy over dx, okay? So if we're using functional notation, f of x is equal to x squared plus 1, then we can write its derivative as f prime, right, f prime of x, or We can write it as this. However, um, so what does this mean? This is going to be take the derivative of f of x with respect to x. Okay, that's fine, but you usually don't see this notation. It's not common. Okay, so it's just some um, minor stuff, but might um, if you have this minor question, I can see it. Right, so if it's in y, you can write the derivative as y prime of dy of dx. If it's f of x, we usually write it as f prime of x. Okay.